Harris, Coach Rodney Terry. Coach, if we can start with you, just some general remarks on today's game. When you uh, when you're coming into this game, that it's going to be a hard fall contest. Uh, we're playing, I, I think, the most mentally tough team in this league. Uh, a team that uh, I think has the best effort players in, in, in the country. Uh, so we knew what we were up against in terms of coming in and having to win the 50-50 balls against a, a very tough team. Um, I thought our guys really competed at a very high level. And, uh, you know, we left it all out on the floor. Thank you, Coach. This time we'll open up for questions for the student athletes only, and then we'll come back to Coach Terry. Questions for our athletes? Back. Thank you. Uh, Tyler, just uh, how much of building off of what you guys did Saturday night did you take into this game against Colorado State? Um, I think we took a lot into it. I, I think we, we had a really hard fought game against UNLV, and um, we kind of got accustomed to the building. We kind of had a leg up on uh, the fact that we had just played here, and we, we played pretty well. And um, I think that uh, it carried over for a little bit, and uh, down the stretch, unfortunately, we didn't uh, make all the plays that we were supposed to to come out on the right end. Marvell, I just wanted to ask you how different Colorado State, did they seem a lot different to you without Dorian Green with John Ockeus running like the team you would face the other two times? Um, a little bit of both. I mean, it was the same team. I mean, without Green, they didn't have as much outside shooting, but Octavius, he stepped up and made some shots, so I would say it was the same team. Any other questions for our student athletes? Uh, again, either one of you, just wanted to ask you, Colorado State obviously with Green out had some other guys kind of step up, guys like Santo got 10 points at the dunk at the end. Were those guys you expected to come through, or was it a little bit of a surprise that some of those guys that don't play as many minutes for them maybe came up big? Coach talks about uh, how anybody can have a big night. I mean, they're on the scouting report, and, and you see that they everybody has talent at this level. I mean, they're not on that team for no reason. And uh, uh, fortunately for them, some guys stepped up when Green was hurt, and uh, we kind of came out on the wrong end of that. Tyler, even though you guys were the, the underdogs coming into this game, how disappointing is it to, to come so close and then at the end not be able to, as you said, make the plays to get the victory? Well, I mean, in our, in our locker room, we weren't in, an underdog. I mean, we were playing as well as anybody coming down the stretch. I mean, we had won, um, you know, more games in the last second half of the season than we did the whole first half. So um, in our mind, we weren't really underdogs. Um, and unfortunately, again, um, with with Green being out, I mean, we, nobody took anything for granted. But um, again, we just couldn't uh, make some of the plays on defense, getting those stops, finishing with rebounds to uh, to go to the other end and get scores. Can both players, starting with you, Tyler, talk about how you played so well down the stretch, especially these last three games, about the future, how excited you guys are, and how you're building something. Seem to start building something special now. Well, I mean, you see, this guy to my left has turned himself into a, a pretty good player and an all league type player. If he continues on the same type of path that he's been doing, um, he's in there. He's in the gym working hard. We got a couple guys um, back at home who who had the red shirt who were really excited about uh, Cesar Guerrero and and Broderick Newville, and uh, we're we're really excited with the new guys that we got coming in. But uh, I mean, I'm. We're not really looking at that right now. Just kind of um, trying to send our seniors off the right way and make sure that uh, they're mentally okay. Uh, yeah, we're, we're excited about the future, but like Tyler was saying, like right, we're like in the moment right now. We're just ready to get back home, start working hard in the off season, getting prepared for next season. I mean, we don't want to dwell on this loss. So basically, our motive is to get back and work hard and prepare for next season.
Any other questions for our student athletes? Okay, we'll dismiss them at this time. Thank you, ma'am. Now take questions for Coach Terry. Coach, having played one season in each league, the WAC and the Mountain West, can you talk a little bit maybe about the differences between the two leagues and then uh, you know the trajectory of your program now in the new league? I just said this to our guys a little while ago. As <clears throat> we finished up, how proud I was of the way they competed, and I think the best league in this country. And, uh, you know, we definitely stepped up a level of competition this year. Uh, I, I also said to those guys, if we were in the WAC, we'd be in the top two, three in the league, I think, personally, because night in and night out, the way we bring it. Um, but uh, we, you know, this league's been arguably number one, number two RPI all year long. There are no nights off in this league at all. Um, you know, it's older league, a lot of established programs. And, uh, again, you know, I, Toughest league I've been a part of as an assistant. I was in the Big 12 for nine years, you know, at, at Texas, and had a chance two years at Baylor. But uh, uh, this year in this league, with the coaches, the venues, and the talent level, it's the best in the country. Other questions for Coach Terry over here? What did you guys do to really slow down Colt Myers? Taking more than 20 shots in the past two games, and this one he only takes two. He's a load now. He's a load to slow down to begin with. Uh, you know, over the course of the uh, the first two ball games we played with, played those guys, we, we pretty much had the same type of defensive offset that we that we wanted to work with. We worked with the with the baseline trap coming mostly from our guards, perimeter players. Um, you know, hoping to pick up a charge and get him off the floor because we know they're a different team with them not being on the floor. And, uh, you know, we were able to do that early in this ball game. We got him off the floor in, early in the game. And, uh, uh, but he, I'll give him a lot of credit, too. He's one of the best big man passers, not only in our league, but also in the country. He finds guys. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, you, you can only hope to try to contain him from an offensive standpoint. You want to really try to keep him off the glass because that's really where he's a major problem. Uh, I know he's been shooting the ball extremely well from the field, you know, but uh, I think just if you can get fouls on him and keep him off the glass, obviously it, it slows it slows those guys' motion a little bit. Coach, just going in, if somebody had told you you were going to hold Iverson to seven points, Horning to four points, um, would you have thought, and Green wouldn't play at all, would you have thought you'd have a pretty good chance of winning this game? I like our chances. I tell you, we uh, we had a really good contest against those guys up there. You know, five minute mark. I mean, it's a one possession game uh, on their home court. Um, you know, but I, I, I definitely would like my chances with Green out of the game and, and doing what we did on those guys. Give those guys off the bench a lot of credit. They came in and, and gave them a great lift. Coach, Coach Stacey has done a great job uh, with this group. This group here is. You know, I, I know it's been considered maybe the best team to ever play at Colorado State, and I've said this to Larry. No pressure on him, but I think they're a Sweet 16 team, team that has a chance to make a deep run in March if they're healthy and, uh, and guys are playing at the level that they've been playing. Coach, missing the three free throws down the stretch, is that obviously you look at that as kind of like a pivotal point in the game. You, you, cut, you go down from nine, you cut it to two, and the free throws aren't just fall, aren't falling anymore. Well, if you look at it as a whole, I think free throws was the biggest part of the game for us right now. I mean, we shot 56% from the line, and we've been pretty consistent where we've uh, we've made those over the last few ball games, and, and you know it's given us great momentum in terms of opportunities to win ball games. But uh, you know, we knew today we had to make free throws, we had to win the effort game in terms of the 50-50 plays, and for the better part of the game, we did that. Uh, we came up a little short at the free throw line. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much, Coach. Thanks.